That was University of Wisconsin professor Kevin Barrett, who has recently drawn criticism for plans to teach an Islamic studies course next fall that will incorporate conspiracy theories that the U.S. government was involved in the events of September 11th. Professor Barrett joins us now. Professor, can you give us the context within which you teach this? Okay. What you've just seen here is he used a nonverbal gesture with his hands and an outward motion to kind of scatter his thinking and then swayed both of his hands over to his left shoulder which would give the subconscious uh, impression of being far to the left and also kind of uh, distracts his thinking a little bit so that's what he's doing that's why his hands are all over the place and then they swing over to his left shoulder to send the subconscious message that he is an extremist uh, a left winger okay can you give us the context within which you teach this well, yeah, sure. I'm teaching an introductory course on Islam. And I think it's really important uh, to cover these contemporary political issues. And one of them is, of course, the so-called war on terror. Now, the fact is that the great majority of the world's Muslims believe that 9-11 was an inside job. Oh, but and that's if, your uh, opinion, right? You're... Again, manipulation is all about timing and redirecting and trying to take control of somebody when they're speaking. Here, you see a great example of that by saying that's your opinion even though he just stated there's a vast number of people that are waking up even though he specifies the Muslim community that's not true it's all over the world so the journalist responsibility to misdirect his thinking and to to mislead you is to follow up and say but that's your opinion even though he stated that it wasn't just his opinion but it doesn't matter because people believe what they hear from newscasters they take in the barrage of words and the newscaster here understands that so if he says that he plants that seed now the fact is that the great majority of the world's muslims believe that 9-11 was an inside job oh, but and that's if, your uh, opinion right you're well no you're that's, the, that's your opinion look. that there was an inside job uh, well, after studying the evidence pretty intensively for uh, two and a half years, I am convinced that 9-11 was, in fact, an inside And are students was... required to regurgitate that in, a, in some of way in order not. to do well in your That's class? Right. Again, more manipulation. I'm sure you caught that. Even though this very system of the world creates people to regurgitate, they will often accuse people of doing the things that they do. It's just part of it, okay? So by saying our students required to regurgitate that gives the subconscious impression that he is controlling their minds and not teaching them to think when in actuality to be able to see through the media, to be able to see what is going on is not regurgitation. Any person that does regurgitate and only memorize and not think would not be able to see through it anyway. It doesn't matter. This is reverse psychology. This is just not even that. It's just manipulation. It's just name calling. It's I'm rubber, you're a glue. Again, this is a way that he disrupts the guy's thinking with petty comments like that. He knows that this type of person would never want anybody to regurgitate anything because that doesn't allow them to learn to think. Doesn't matter. If there's an audience to this, he plants that seed again. Uh, well, after studying the evidence pretty intensively for uh, two and a half years, I am convinced that 9-11 was, in fact, an inside And are students required to regurgitate that in, a, in some way in order to do well in your That's class? That's ridiculous. No, I, I don't, I'm not interested in making students regurgitate anything. All right, Mr. Barrett, Sean Hannity here. Do you really believe that 9-11 uh, was an inside job? Okay, Sean Hannity. I never watched Fox News before. But uh, within seconds of seeing this guy, you can just see that he is a snake. At least he is currently conducting himself as such. Now, this is pretty basic, what he's doing. He's not giving eye contact. He's pretending to be bored with the guy's very presence. And this is a way to discredit him that way, as if he's just a, some sort of gnat and uh, not even worth considering. And that's why he's purposely looking down and, and acting bored when he talks to him. Secondly, he uses the word believe. Do you really believe? To believe is not to know. And that's why he's stressing that. And again, you're going to start to see extreme manipulation from this Mr. Hannity. All right, Mr. Barrett, Sean Hannity here. Do you really believe that 9-11 uh, was an inside job, not just 9-11, but Madrid and Bali and the Zakawi well, operations? Well, you know, actually, hey, uh, I'm at, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay. All right, so what he does is he tries to take control 
of this conversation right away. He insinuates something, and the professor was smart enough to catch what he was saying, and then when he tried to respond to that, he interrupts him to take control. Now, notice, and I'll point this out in a little bit, when he puts his hand up in the OK sign, you're about to learn what that really means and what they use it for. Uh, but for now, just understand that that's how they'll do it. They'll insult you while they speak and try to continue speaking before you can actually reply to it. And therefore, it makes the professor look nuts. You know what I mean? Because if people don't catch this neuro-linguistic programming, if they don't catch the manipulation, you know, which is that comprises the majority of the audience anyway, nevertheless, if they don't catch it, then he can do that. He can take those cheap shots and when the professor tries to correct those, then he interrupts him, says, hey, hold on, you know, and then tries to make him look rude for interrupting and take control over him and disrupt his thinking at the same time. Well, you know, actually, uh, I'm at, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah, Do you okay, believe okay, personally that these are inside jobs, yes or no? Uh, it's not quite that simple. Okay, believe personally, that's another way to plant that into your psyche, that it is just he that believes this. And then he uses the yes or no trap. Because that is, again, misleading if you can't see that. The way he twisted around that question would not allow the professor to be able to give a yes or no answer because he injected manipulation into the question itself. So when the professor tries to say that, of course, then it puts them under pressure. The professor is smart enough to catch that, and it isn't that simple, and he understands. The professor knew, of course, what I'm telling you right now. However, time is ticking. He only has so much time on the air, and their job is to disrupt his thinking as much as possible and make as many hidden accusations as they can and as many subconscious embeds into how to perceive the professors they can in the short amount of time that he's on the air and that's their only job is to discredit and disrupt okay but he did catch it now he has to respond to that rather than being able to say anything that matters and that's what they do another good person at this is Stephen Colbert if you watch Stephen Colbert with any of his interviews his whole job is to discredit and disrupt that's what he does and you keep it moving it's very very petty but these are the people that you allow to run you okay so know that and that's what's going on right here yes or no uh, it's not quite that simple. I'm, I do know, I don't believe, I know that 9-11 was an inside job. Professor Stephen Jones okay. has found residue of fermate on the steel samples this. from what the World Trade Center. We now know that it was taken down in a controlled demolition. All right, so you believe that the buildings came down in a controlled demolition? Okay, so the professor did a really good job of identifying his manipulation by saying, I don't believe, I know. And because he was starting to get through that, Hannity interrupts him and says, I don't have a lot of time. Well, wait a minute. You just asked him a question, and now he's able to break through your manipulation, and suddenly you don't have a lot of time for the very answer to the question that you just asked. The next thing you see, he asks him, what evidence does he have? And he interrupted him, giving the evidence to ask him what evidence he has. Why? Of course, he's not interested in hearing the evidence or anybody else hearing it. He's interested in interrupting him and planting another embed into the psyche that what he happens to be saying right now is somehow not evidence. It's all misdirection of focus, redirection of focus, disrupting, interrupting, gaining control, and, you know, it's this very petty, they, they rely on these petty techniques. Now, at the end of this, he does something that a lot of you probably aren't aware of. He does a hand gesture. He takes both of his hands and he puts them up in front of his head and then pulls them down. And he pretends he's talking about the buildings falling down. What that is, is I, I don't know what they would term it. I'm just intuitive. I'm perceptive. I can see what they're doing. That's sorcery. Sorcery is just anything that is used to circumvent the conscious mind, to control the mind. That gesture is designed to take away his zest, his focus, his power. By bringing his hands down like that, he's trying to subconsciously take away the focus of the professor, take away his power. And that's exactly what he's doing, and that's what you're seeing, and I'll play that again for you. Inside job. Professor Stephen Jones okay. has found residue of fermate on the steel samples from what the World Trade Center. We now know that it was taken down in a controlled demolition.
in a controlled demolition. All right, so you believe that the buildings came down in a controlled demolition, right? Well, I don't believe it. I've looked at the evidence, I mean, you're and right, the evidence is overwhelming. All right, the evidence is overwhelming to you because you're sure a conspiracy nut, but, no, you know, actually, all, all of you, aside. I ask your viewers to take... Okay. Now, in this one, I'm sure you caught the obvious part, but you probably did not catch the neuro-linguistic programming. What exactly is neuro-linguistic programming? Simply put, it's dual meaning that is speaking to the subconscious. Now, of course, he's shaping public opinion by saying, it's obvious to you because you are a conspiracy nut. Well, remember now, people are very phobic of being called anything that goes against the norm. So if you agree with him, oh, then you're a nut and people, you know, they can't escape their own ego. So that's used to shape him. What you probably didn't catch is him saying, but, you know, putting that all aside, this is neuro-linguistic programming. Now, pay attention here. You're a conspiracy nut, but putting that all aside, what that is doing is he's directing your subconscious mind and your conscious mind to store that label, that impression of him. Put it aside. Keep that. It's called anchoring. In neuro-linguistic programming, because I've watched a little bit of it, I didn't need to watch it to pick up on how they do this, but it allows you to get some of their terminology down. They call this anchoring. Anchoring a thought, anchoring a concept, anchoring a feeling. Putting all of that aside means put that aside in your mind. He's a conspiracy nut. Do you see how they manipulate you? That's a, a very good lesson right there in neuro-linguistic programming. All right, the evidence is overwhelming to you because you're sure a conspiracy nut. But, no, you know, actually, all, all of you, aside. I ask your viewers to take a look at this evidence for themselves. They can go to uh, st911.org. Uh, That's all right, Scholars for 9-11 Truth. Take a look. Take a look at, the, the, uh, uh, at the demolition. I know you Morgan think Reynolds, the smartest guy former the, Bush administration the official. Okay, that's pretty obvious. You see how he's treating him. Very nonchalant, irritated, bored. And I know you think you're the smartest guy in the world. This is, you know, the, the typical you're a know-it-all type of comment. If you watch that David Icke video where he goes back on Wogan, he draws attention to the same thing where he said, whoa, that's a cheap shot when he said, uh, you know it all. And the response was accurate. I'm not saying a know-it-all. Uh, but people are trained to hate people who, quote, know it all. Why? Because they want you to be dumb. That's why in society you have catchphrases that go around that people use like, you think too much, you're too deep, you know it all. These have all become derogatory terms in this new Orwellian society. Haven't you noticed that? His response is petty and childish, but he means to be this way. It does nothing, it addresses nothing. He can't think of anything to say in response to the professor, so he has to take a cheap shot like this. I know you think you're the smartest guy in the world. You, that should be obvious to you, that that is just overdoing it, creating, manifesting an insult, just again for one reason and one reason only, to disrupt his thinking and to program your mind on how to view him. Take a look at here's the, the uh, at the demolition. I know you Morgan think Reynolds, the smartest former guy in the, Bush administration the guy official, in the says the that the, the Bush administration the is, blew the are... World Trade Center to kingdom come. That's a direct quote right. from a member of the Bush administration itself. They I know. Blew and there the were World people Trade that Center said that the Jews come. were told to leave. Well, we've heard a lot of these sick, bizarre theories. That. I... Okay, so suddenly he's an anti-Semite. When did that come about? I didn't hear him say anything about the Jews. What he's doing here is he's trying to link him to anti-Semitism. That's what they want to do. Now, anybody that's really trying to speak the truth in this world has no interest in focusing on a group or even an individual. What they try to focus on is the problem in general, outside of any group or individual that may be manifesting the symptoms of the problem. But again, what he's trying to do here is, in your mind, link the professor to being part of a hate group, someone that's going to target a group or an individual and make you link the terms sick and bizarre to the professor. He didn't say anything about the Jewish community. Nothing. So catch that. See how he's trying to link the professor to it. The World Trade Center to Kingdom Come. That's a direct quote right. from a member of the Bush administration itself. They I know. Flew and there the were World people Trade that Center said that the Kingdom Jews Come. were told to leave. Well, we've heard a lot of these sick, bizarre theories. That's and not I don't the believe same any thing. of them. But you're allowed that's to believe what you want, but that's not what's at hand here. 
Okay, now another thing, just to make you aware, again, of just how much they're programming your mind. To you, it looks like a man that said that's not the issue at hand here. You need to start learning their language. Their language is dual meaning, which goes hand in hand with neural linguistic programming. The issue at hand here, what he's doing is directing the professor to look at his hand. Now, why would he have the professor look at his hand? Well, if you look at his hand right now, you see it is what you've been told is the OK sign, right? Well, let's show you what it really means. The OK symbol, as you see right here, means 666. For some reason, 666 has some sort of control over the mind. Now, it could have something to do with the beast computers many of you have read about. It's sorcery. It is putting a hex on somebody. It is subconscious symbolism that somehow affects some people. It doesn't affect everybody. But he's using that, and he was directing the professor to look at his hand to use sorcery on him. It's not that one thing will work. They try to use as many combinations of things as they can. But that is a symbol, and it means 666. And that is why he told him to look at his hand, or the issue at hand here told his mind subconsciously to look at his hand. Do you see? And that is what just occurred there. That's not what's at hand here meaning you are not allowed to believe what you want. And that also tells the population looking at him, because remember, he is also talking to people that are watching television. And so they are also instructed to look at his hand subconsciously or take notice of it subconsciously. And when he says you're allowed to believe what you want, but that's not what's at hand here, he's saying with the 666 rule over your mind, you are not allowed to believe what you want. And that speaks to your subconscious mind and programs people to not think. And that's what it means all around and all together. That's what just happened. Any of them, but you're allowed to believe what you want, but that's not what's at hand here. The issue well, is, is whether or not science. you, with your bizarre theories, are the best. Well, I think you have the, the most bizarre theory. You think it was 19 Hang bucks? On a okay, again, saying his issues, his views are bizarre, right? But the reason he puts up his pinky there is because that is the weakest finger that it would imply a small penis, uh, not a potent man, using that in reference to him, saying that he is impotent, that he is bizarre, that he is weak, and that he is of the pinky. And that's why he chooses, of all fingers and all gestures, to speak about his theories, he puts his pinky up. And these are all subconscious sorcery methods. Again, sorcery is not some guy wearing a magician's hat. Part of sorcery is speaking to and manipulating the conscious mind from the subconscious. Well, it's, it's a question of science. Not you, with your bizarre theories, are the best. Well, I think you have the, the bizarre confident. theory. You think it was 19 box guys with box cutters led by a guy in dialysis in a cave in, Afga in, in Afghanistan? That's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's the craziest conspiracy theory of all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wish I had the Twilight Zone music. Now, here's my next... See, all he can say is something to discredit him. I wish I had the Twilight Zone music. And then the people watching the televisions that say, yes, that must be weird. Twilight Zone music is weird. And the, the honest, incredible news reporter is saying that about him. Okay, now you see that all the neuro-linguistic programming is starting to get to the professor. He's starting to screw up his words. He's starting to screw up his concentration. He's mispronouncing. That's because there's a lot of negative energy being focused on him, interrupting his thought process. So you can see how he's starting to screw up his words, but he's still holding, you know, with all of that working against them and being unaware of those techniques, he still holds his own, but you start to see it get to him a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that's the craziest conspiracy theory of all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wish I had the Twilight Zone music. Now, here's my next question. The issue <laughs> okay, that is at hand here, you're entitled to have your opinion. I don't really care what you believe. But if we're talking about a captive group of students in a class... Again, making a bored face as if he's nothing. He's the pinky. He's lower than low. I really don't care what you believe. But if we're talking about a captive group of students... Okay, first he, he said that 
they implied that he wants his students to regurgitate. Now he's holding them captive, which goes hand in hand with what? Terrorism, hostages. He's subconsciously painting this professor to be what? A terrorist. So not only have they discredited him, but people are already getting in their minds that uh, with this neuro linguistic programming, that's now you understand what neuro linguistic programming is. Neural brain linguistic speech programming, programming the brain with speech via the subconscious. Dual meaning. I don't really care what you believe, but if we're talking about a captive group of students in a classroom, the question we've got to ask. Hang on a second. Well, they're they're sitting in your classroom, and and you have a position of authority. I'm, a, I'm wondering, it's what, the question is whether or not you're the most competent to teach them. And most people think you're a nut. Now, this one should be obvious. Isn't he a person that's in a position of authority? And isn't he about as incompetent as you can get as far as love and honesty and caring about other life forms? Yet he turns it around because people believe what they hear and what they read. So if he says it first, and that's a big part of this, is trying to say things first before somebody else can say something, then it seems like they will always be on the defensive. And that's the whole point is to keep the professor on the defensive. All right. And saying that uh, he is detrimental to his students when the truth is Fox News is incredibly detrimental to you just in this short clip I'm showing you here and people are watching this all day long and most people think you're a nut most people think well, you're actually, no, they don't. worth we listening just, to we just uh, had a poll here in Madison and we found that 90 percent of the respondents at Channel 3000 poll uh, said that I should be allowed to teach only 10 percent well, said I should and 60 percent 60 percent I don't think what your views are agreed with me about right. the questions I'm raising about 9-11 60 no, no. percent of the respondents I, I think uh, you're you have in the minority right speak I don't think this is the proper forum though for people that hold extremist views like yourself okay first of all when he says no no like that what he's doing is he's programming the television viewers collective consciousness to disregard the results of that poll he says no no and then your mind says no to the information he just gave these are just little tricks he slips in there and most people think he's a nut what but see people watch that of course and they store that in their mind as fact of course, most people do not think he is a nut. But if he says that, he programs anybody watching this television program, hint, hint, that everybody thinks he's a nut. So I will, too, to fit in. Where did he get that number? How does he know most people think that he's a nut? Think about it. I, they don't. He just says it. And then the professor has to respond to that. He's totally disrupting the whole interview so it appears to people because time is moving by that there's actually an interview going on here but it's not it's only about disrupting and discrediting and programming your opinion okay first of all i used to live in madison wisconsin and i can tell you that people did not think that he was crazy it was the television that began to program people to think that he was crazy Again, now, extremist views like yourself. Now, they already set the stage in your mind or the viewer's mind before he brought that up in the beginning when that first reporter took his hands and whipped him over to the left side of his shoulder to subconsciously say that he's an extreme leftist. He's on the extreme left. So now they're reinforcing that, telling you to believe that he is extremist, that these are extreme things. Well... Fox is 666. Look, I mean, just look. Look what they're doing. Look what I'm pointing out to you. Once you start to understand the dual meaning of neuro-linguistic programming, things become crystal clear to you. About right. the questions I'm raising about 9-11, no, 60% no. of the respondents. I, I think uh, you you're in the minority. Right speak. I don't think this is the proper forum, though, for people that hold extremist views like yourself. Reasonable no, you people guys are extremists. Reasonable people. Now, notice what he did there. He took his hands and he gestured them towards himself and said reasonable people while pointing to himself. Therefore, your subconscious and your conscious mind is shaped to see Sean Hannity as the reasonable person. 
They're always using gestures against you in coordination with dual meaning in things they say and direct meaning. So again, reasonable people, all he has to do is point to himself, and that's a subtle, nonverbal gesture to make you associate being reasonable with Sean Hannity's point of view. He's programming your mind. So now after you have associated being reasonable with Sean Hannity, and when he says people think, he points out or opens his hand so you are to think. See, reasonable people, he points to himself and then opens it up to you, think. You shouldn't be allowed to teach this class. We can do a better job. People will be programmed by that. Reasonable no, you guys are extremists. Fox News extremist. is the biggest bunch of extremists on the I planet. But and reasonable you... people see you as an extremist, and I don't think you're the most appropriate guy to teach that class. My, but my guess well, I don't is think you're the most appropriate guy to be on the airwaves spewing you. your venom. And the professor got it right. You can see the look on his face. Uh, he says, spewing your venom. That's exactly what he's doing. The problem is that you can't get all of this out in an interview. For example, say I was on an interview like this. They would be doing all the same things to me. All I would be doing is calling attention to everything he's doing, and then he would sit there and argue with me. Nothing would ever get discussed. This is how they take advantage of people. Look how long it's taken me. Do you know this clip is only like two minutes long normally? But just to describe two very short minutes of media to you, look how long this is taking. That's the problem. That's why I haven't done it before. Because I can sit here and explain it to you, but you need to open up your eyes so you can see it for yourself because it all happens way too quickly. If you try to explain something that happens in a three-second period, if you're not educated on that, if you're not aware of it, it will go by way too fast before you can bring somebody up to speed to understand what's going on. This is why I had to break it down for you, but I still can't do this with everything I see because this is everywhere. This is common. This is always going on. And it just, you need to educate yourself, but you need to become aware. Again, dual meaning, neuro-linguistic programming, gesturing, association of concepts and beliefs to link them, anchor them in your mind, to misdirect your perception, your beliefs, and your ability to perceive reality in general. Class, my, but my guess well, I don't is think you're the most appropriate guy to be on the airwaves spewing you. your venom That's my uh, throughout this country. Uh, I think you guys should be taken off the airwaves oh, because you are the guys who are... Uh, we don't want to silence so anybody. For, uh, you teach will do anything. Thank you, Thank you Professor. Times. Coming up, we'll have a... We don't want to silence anybody. That's exactly what they have just done. Though you heard a lot of speaking going on, nothing was able to get out into the open. They completely took control of this poor man. And he's brave, okay, to get out there, lose his job, and to speak the truth. And they hound him like bees. They, they're using techniques that are hidden, that are sorcery, they're of sorcery in their nature. They're hypnotic, they're, they're using negative energy, manipulative techniques, childish argument techniques. And so you've seen a lot of talking, but nothing got out into the open. And you see how nervous they made him? Why? Because he couldn't, he had to keep dealing with their techniques and he couldn't express the truth. And this is how anybody who tries to get on the media to speak the truth is manipulated. And that's why most don't even bother. They don't bother because they would just get into an argument. I mean, what's the point? The expert that I've seen at this is Stephen Colbert. He was one of the biggest disinformation agents out there. He'll get somebody in for an interview and just completely distract, disrupt, discredit, and there is no interview. That's what I call Stephen Colbert's interviews. Uh, they're, they're not interviews. They're Stephen Colbert using techniques to distract and discombobulate basically so this is why you don't get the truth in the media even if people do get a chance at airtime they will be interrupted misdirected hypnotic suggestions to the audience that are watching it you just can't uh, people that know the truth won't even try they won't even try to go on the mainstream media and people that do it ends up like this so until that is addressed then Nothing will ever be told on mainstream media. But what you can learn from this, don't watch TV. Okay? I hope this helps. It's happening, you know, largely through this false flag terrorism. 
it looks to me like you know not only 9/11 but also the uh, Madrid 7/7, the Bali hotel bombing, and probably uh, most of these so-called Darqawi style uh, bombings in Iraq are all false flag operations being carried out by you know a special wing of uh, probably U.S. or Western uh, military intelligence. That was University of Wisconsin professor Kevin Barrett, who has recently drawn criticism for plans to teach an Islamic studies course next fall that will incorporate conspiracy theories that the U.S. government was involved in the events of September 11th. Professor Barrett joins us now. Professor, can you give us the context within which you teach this? Well, yeah, sure. I'm teaching an introductory course on Islam. And I think it's really important uh, to cover these contemporary political issues. And one of them is, of course, the so-called war on terror. Now, the fact is that the great majority of the world's Muslims believe that 9-11 was an inside job. Oh, but that's it, your uh, opinion, right? You're, well, no, that's the that's your opinion look. that there was an inside job. Uh, well, after studying the evidence pretty intensively for uh, two and a half years, I am convinced that 9-11 was, in fact, an inside And are job students because... required to regurgitate that in, a, in some of way in order not. to do well in your That's class? That's ridiculous. No, I, I don't, I'm not interested in making students regurgitate anything. I'm interested in training people how to use critical thinking skills to look at the evidence any, uh, in any area and come to their own conclusions. Is this and a required class? I hope they'll be able to do that. Uh, no, it's not. So this is basically an elective class. How much, of, yeah, how much of the time is spent focusing on who caused 9-11? Uh, only about one week. We're looking at the war on terror for one week, and in fact, it's not focusing on who caused it. It's looking at the uh, main interpretations of 9-11. And uh, there are really several different ways of looking at 9-11, and one of them, of course, is the uh, standard American story of the war on terror that changed everything. It set us at war. Uh, it took, rolled back our civil liberties. It doubled our military but do budget. All those things have been wanna, planned do you before 9-11. Every me, one of those things was put in place before 9-11. Do you objectively put forth that view as well as the view of how you perceive Muslims viewing us, are they presented in a fair and balanced manner? Of course. In the classroom, I always present things in a fair and balanced manner. Outside the classroom, when I'm an activist or a satirist, uh, I'll tell it like it is. Inside the classroom, I'll present all of the defensible interpretations and let the students uh, use their own critical reasoning skills to come to their own conclusions. All right, Mr. Barrett, Sean Hannity here. Do you really believe that 9-11 uh, was an inside job, not just 9-11, but Madrid and Bali and the Zakawi well, operations? Well, you know, actually... Uh, I'm at, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah, Do you okay, believe okay, personally up. that these are inside jobs, yes or no? Uh, it's not quite that simple. I'm, I do know, I don't believe, I know that 9-11 was an inside job. Professor Stephen Jones okay. has found residue of thermate on the steel samples this. from what the World Trade Center. We now know that it was taken down in a controlled demolition. All right, so you believe that the buildings came down in a controlled demolition, right? Well, That's... I don't believe it. I've looked at the evidence, right, you're and right, the evidence is overwhelming. All right, the evidence is overwhelming to you because you're sure a conspiracy nut, but no, you know, actually, all, all of you, aside. I ask your viewers to take a look at this evidence for themselves. They can go to uh, st911.org. That's all right, Scholars for 9 11 Truth. Here's... Take a look. Take a look at, the, the, uh, uh, at the demolitions. I know you Morgan think you're the Reynolds, the former the... Bush I administration official, says that. The Bush administration the is, blew the World Trade Center to kingdom come. That's a direct quote right. from a member of the Bush administration itself. They I know. blew and there the were World Trade Center to kingdom come. The Jews come. were told to leave. Well, we've heard a lot of these sick, bizarre theories. That's and not I don't the believe same any thing. of them, but you're allowed that's to believe what you want, but that's not what's at hand here. The issue well, is, is whether or not science. you with your bizarre theories are the best. I think you have the, the bizarre theory. You think it was 19 box second. guys with box cutters led by a guy on dialysis in a cave in, Afga in, in Afghanistan? That's ridiculous. You know. I mean, that's the craziest conspiracy theory of all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wish I had the Twilight Zone music. Now, here's my next question. The issue <laughs> okay, that is at hand here, you're entitled to have your opinion. I don't really care what you believe. But if we're talking about a captive group of students in a classroom, the question we've got to ask... captive. Hang on a second. Well, they're, they're sitting in your classroom, and, and you have a position of authority. I'm, a, I'm wondering, it's what, the question is whether or not you're the most competent to teach them. And most people think you're a nut. Most people think well, you're actually, no, they don't. worth we listening just, to. We just uh, had a poll here in Madison, and we found that 90% of the respondents at Channel 3000 poll uh, said that I should be allowed to teach. Only 10% well, said I shouldn't. The and 60%, I agree that that's 60%, the question. I don't think what 60 your views are. 60% agreed with me about right. the questions I'm raising about 9-11. 60% no, no. of the respondents. I, I think uh, you're, you're in the minority. Right to speak. I don't think this is the proper forum, though, for people that hold extremist views like yourself. Reasonable no, you guys are extremists. Fox you are News is the biggest bunch of extremists on the I planet.
But and reasonable you, people see you as an extremist, and I don't think you're the most appropriate guy to teach that class. My, my guess well, I don't is, think my you're the most appropriate guy to be on the airwaves spewing you. your venom That's my uh, throughout this country. Uh, I think you guys should be taken off the airways well, because you are the guys who are... Right, we don't want to silence anybody. For, uh, you teach will do anything. Thank you, Professor. Coming up, we'll have a...